Hey everyone, Mike here from Videomaker. I want to talk today about bitrate and what it is uh, and how it affects your project. So before we can talk about all the nitty gritty of uh, how it affects your project and all the settings involved, uh, let's talk about uh, the definition of bitrate. Basically what it is is the amount of data required to encode a single second of video or audio for that matter. So you're talking about megabits in a single second or kilobits in a single second. So first off, what does bitrate affect? Basically it affects the file size and the quality of your video, so how it looks and how big the file is when you're uploading. The accessibility of the file, as in how fast of an internet connection do you, you need to be able to view it. Uh, and finally, how much does it cost to deliver it if you're uploading a video to your own site and you're delivering it to all the visitors of that site. So overall, the rule of thumb is the higher the bitrate, the better quality video and uh, at the cost of a bigger file size. That's independent of things like resolution and frame rate in the codec. So for example, if you have a 1080p file um, and you say, I want this 1080p file to be five megabits per second, uh, your codec is gonna apply a certain amount of compression to hit that bit rate. Now, if you increase your resolution up to something like 4K, it's gonna apply just more compression to hit five megabits per second. So, uh, in reality, a 4K, five megabit per second video file is gonna be worse quality than a 1080p five megabit per second video quality. Now, the same goes for frame rates. So, if you have a 30 frames per second video uh, that you're compressing down to that five megabits per second, it's gonna apply so much compression. Now, if all of a sudden you jump to 60 frames per second, now it's got to compress each frame even more to achieve five megabits per second. And as a result, the video quality is going to degrade because of it. Another factor that affects the quality of your video is the codec. So uh, codecs have a big part to play in how good your video looks at the end of the day. So for example, uh, H.264 came out and everyone was really excited because you could take that same end goal of five megabit per second video, apply the H.264 codec, and the quality you got at the end was much higher quality than than other codecs at the time. Now, if you want to learn more about codecs specifically, if all this is Greek to you, be sure to check out our video on this uh, and we'll put the link in the description. The takeaway from all this is basically that if you have a high resolution video at a high frame rate, you're going to have to crank up your bit rate in order to maintain the same quality that you would with a standard resolution, standard frame rate video. So let's talk about accessibility and delivery cost. Basically what this comes down to is, as you're compressing your file and choosing your bitrate, if you have a high bitrate file, you have to consider whether or not people are gonna be able to consume it. So for example, if you live in rural Montana, you might not be able to download a 10 megabit per second video or, or stream it from YouTube or uh, your own website. And the same thing is true when you're considering the delivery cost. If you're hosting videos on your own site, uh, a higher bitrate stream is going to cost you more in bandwidth fees as more people visit your site. All right, let's talk about CBR, VBR, and passes. Basically, CBR is constant bitrate, VBR is variable bitrate, and passes we'll get to in a minute. Basically, what CBR or constant bitrate says is we're going to look at every individual frame and compress them the same amount regardless of their content throughout the entire video. It's really good for streaming video where you need a constant flow of information at a predictable rate so you're not finding hiccups in connection speeds and, and playback. Variable bitrate says I'm going to look at every frame individually and determine whether it needs a lot of compression or not very much compression. So if we take for example the video of me standing right here, I've got a lot of black over here and um, compression at a variable bitrate would look at that and say, this big black area can take a lot of compression because there's not a lot of detail to lose. Um, whereas some shots might have quite a bit more detail and compression would really make them fuzzy or uh, there would be digital artifacts or whatnot. So um, variable bitrate is great for looking at every frame individually and, and determining a very efficient way to co uh, encode the file. Typical settings for variable bitrate codecs are going to be target bitrate, maximum bitrate, and minimum bitrate. Basically what it says is target is what you want your bitrate to be overall, um, and then minimum and maximum bitrate is going to say this is how much or how little compression you have to play with in either direction depending on the needs of the frame. Passes basically says how many times am I going to look at the video before making a determination on how to compress the video. 
bottom line is the more passes you allow your codec to do, the smarter it's gonna be, the better image quality you're gonna get at no cost to your file size. The only thing it does do is add to your render time. So if you have the time to allow for a longer render, it's usually worth it to increase the number of passes. The big question at the end of the day is what bitrate should you actually use? Now there's no easy answer here. If you're taking your video and you're putting it to a site like YouTube, uh, YouTube is going to take your video and compress the heck out of it before displaying it to uh, all the viewers out there. So in general you want to output a high bitrate file to give to them so that when they compress it, it still looks pretty good. Now the cool thing about a site like YouTube is they keep that original file um, so that if they update their compression algorithm down the road, they'll go back to your original file and compress it again and therefore you'll get a better image quality without having to do anything about it. If you're looking at exporting to mobile devices like cell phones or tablets, um, they vary wildly. Uh, fortunately, most video editing programs have the ability to choose presets based on the device you're outputting to. Our advice is to basically go with the preset. Feel free to fudge with the bitrate numbers if you want to a little bit. Just keep in mind that if you increase your bitrate too much, you might have some trouble with uh, playback issues on the device. We've dedicated all this time talking about video bitrate, but what about audio? Well, frankly, it's audio. We're talking about you know a pretty small amount of data compared to video, but the principles are the same. You might be working with kilobits per second instead of megabits per second, but in general, the bigger the number, the better the quality. Just try to stick with 128 or higher, and you should be fine. If you really need to save space, you can cut uh, stereo down to mono. If you have something like a talking head, you might save a little bit of space, but we're talking about a negligible amount in general. there you have it. Hopefully that answered any questions you have about bitrate. Uh, if you're wondering how you can calculate the final file size depending on what your bitrate is without actually rendering, uh, there's a few ways you can do it. One is just look at the bottom of your encoding screen. Sometimes it'll give you a um, estimated file size like Adobe Media Encoder does that for example. Um, or there's an equation you can follow which I'll put right here because I can't remember what it is. Or you can do what I do and just go to Wolfram Alpha and uh, punch it in and it'll give you the answer right away. Uh, but that's it. I'm Mike from Video Maker. We'll see you next time.